Fucking with a dime Do not, do not waste my time Fucking with a dime my name is Abisha Kamasi. I'm a host here at Lemon Wire, and I am going to be interviewing Faye today. Okay, so yeah. she is an R&B artist here in Indianapolis. Yes. And we're gonna just get to know her today. So yes. thank you guys for watching, like, and subscribe. So you were born in Dublin. Yes. And yes. how long were you over there? Um. So it's honestly, it's like one of those things that like I tell people because like I think it's interesting. But I was honestly only over there for like less than a year. Okay. So it's nothing I like remember, there's no like accent or anything, but I am like an Irish citizen as well as a oh, US citizen. Yeah, so I have like amazing. dual citizenship, yeah. Do you go over there? No, I haven't been back. I go over to London a lot to visit my family, okay. um, but I haven't been to Ireland yet though, I wanna go. Oh, I heard it's amazing. cool, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know, okay. That is really cool. Yeah. And your parents are Nigerian. Yeah. So they were like born there and they met each other and then they produced you. Yeah, I know, <laughs> literally, like it's the magic happened. But yeah, so they were um they were born in Nigeria and then they went to school in like Oh my goodness, this is interesting that like I don't even know exactly where they even met, but I just know <laughs> that they we're living in London, like mm -hmm. when my mom was pregnant, and then they literally just took a ferry boat over to Ireland because they're like, it'd be cool to have our daughter in Ireland. Are so, you serious? yeah, like it wasn't like, it was just a very like Cash. spontaneous, yeah, oh. like let's just have her be an Irish citizen. So, yeah. And then they wow. moved to Indy like right after they had me. So, okay, okay. So, yeah. that was what I was going to ask next. Um, so, you've been here. Yeah. And that's really crazy. Yeah. Because you're so different to me. Oh, thank you. You know, than like all of the, I'd also say like female singers right. are just like the personalities that I feel like I right. like meet and stuff. Yeah. Um, do you travel a lot? Yeah, so I traveled a lot growing up because I was into modeling. Okay. So like I would go to New York every so now and then. Mm -hmm. um, I literally would go to London like every year. Mm -hmm. um, I would go to Nigeria like every few years. So like okay. I did like spontaneous traveling yeah. a little bit, but yeah, I grew up in Carmel, Indiana. So that's where I was for like 18, yeah, 19 years. I'm sure that that traveling probably wrapped Yeah, you right, no, yeah. Especially cause I traveled a lot alone cause of the modeling thing. So like at 14 okay. or 15, like I was traveling alone, so. I yeah. didn't know that you were really taking, like, doing that. Yeah. Like, because I read the bio and stuff. Yeah. And I was just like, okay, that's probably part of her, like, you know, music right. and stuff. But wow, yeah. you were serious. Yeah. How I was tall are you? I'm 5'10". You do look yeah. like a model. Thank you. Oh my yeah, God. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> no, you're good. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so how did you get into music? Okay, so... I was at Purdue, I was doing like my freshman year of college, and okay, wait, let me rewind. So growing up, I had always been into show choir, glee club, musical theater, like I was always into that. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't ever like a thought in my head, like I should like do this, like. Be serious about yeah, it. Yeah, right, like it was just something that I did like extracurricular wise. So then when I got to um, high school, like that, part of my life kind of just kind of like died down a little bit. Yeah, Occasionally, yeah. like I would post a SoundCloud like cover, like mm -hmm. every Where were you months. recording those? Like literally just age? on my garage band, like on my map. Wow. Like just very like bedroomy type of sounds mm -hmm. and like it would get like 50 plays maybe. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it yeah. wasn't anything I was, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't share it with anyone yeah. because I was super like nervous mm -hmm. about like, what people would think. So it was a very like private thing. So when I went to college, my friend, had an in-home studio because mm -hmm. he was rapping at the time and so one day we were over there and he's like how about you like get on like the mic and like since then i hadn't done anything musically like literally si seriously since like middle school like at that point so i was just like okay like i made a song i posted it on soundcloud like it did pretty well mm -hmm. And then I recorded another song, like at like an actual studio in Indy, um, which was Fucking With The Dime. And then it just did really well. And I feel like I used that, cause I wasn't like happy at Purdue, like honestly, like yeah, yeah. I was, I don't I, think like yeah. I don't think artists are happy in school. At, like no. I don't think we like 
um, routine and no, schedules. No. And we're just like, I just want to sit here and make music. Right, like, exactly. <laughs> like, I thought that it was just something that I would, like, grow out of. Mm -hmm. But, like, even when I was in my science classes, like, there would be some people, like, actually getting, like, pumped up for, like, the labs. Like, I was not yeah, yeah. getting, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. it was just a disconnect. So when it did well, I just was like, okay, like, thank God, like, there's an excuse for me to, like, do something else. Because, like, I was not, like, happy with, like, what I was doing. And I feel like when I look back on it, like, growing up, I was always involved in music. So it's kind of, like, scary for me to think that, like, if I hadn't have, like, recorded that song, like, I would have just, like, suppressed, like, that part of me, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I would have just... Done, yeah, it is really crazy how life unfolds, I guess. Like, yeah. you just never know, and it's just small choices yeah, that make no, the biggest difference. they do, they do. So, um, did you, like, hear that beat? Did he make that beat or something? And then, like, yeah. but did you have a project before then? I don't understand now. Now yeah. I'm getting, like... Okay, so <laughs> okay. I didn't have any project before that. I had just, like, I made this, like, one song like, when I was at Purdue. Mm -hmm that like was me like, cause my friend was a rapper. So like he was trying to get me to like rap on it. So like okay. it doesn't even sound anything like what I was doing. Mm -hmm. So then after that kind of did like, well, got like a few thousand plays. I was like, okay. So I started going on YouTube and just like, search, cause I didn't even know how the whole music production thing even worked. Like I didn't yeah. understand the concept of yeah producing and yeah. getting a producer and all that stuff. So I literally just went on YouTube and just found like a random beat mm -hmm. and like wrote to it like mm -hmm. that day and then recorded it like the next day. And like, that's how fucking with the dime came. Like it was no very, way. yeah, the beat is like a YouTube beat that I like, I bought like the unexclusive rights to. Okay. So I can like make money off of it. But I think someone else actually has a beat as well which okay. people don't know. So, yeah, it was just a very... Spontaneous. Yeah, thing. just following my gut, honestly. Yeah. Wow. And it seems like you've been following your gut then. Yeah, Like, through no. the whole thing. Right, no, because that's, that's so... really, it's like belief, right? So yeah. it's just like, either I gotta believe in myself or it's nothing. Yeah, <laughs> and especially like once you like already like put yourself out there. Yeah. Like I, withdrew from like traditional classes like I went full-time online mm -hmm. so I was just like there's not really like a strict you do ABC and you're gonna get here yeah it's more of a feeling like okay like I just you like you're like you said you just have to like believe in yourself because if you don't you're gonna be like scared to do some things and like some of the yeah. things that I was scared to do but I did anyway got me places, if that makes sense. Yeah, so you of kind course. of just have to be scared and just do it anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I definitely understand that. Yeah. Uh, it's really hard to put yourself out there as an artist. Yeah. Because you're literally putting your whole soul out there. Right. You're just right, like, like, this, you're is, like, this like, is me. Right. My nervous ass. Yeah. Like, all just, that. Like, just, and you don't know how people are going to respond. Oh, like, it's yeah. one of those things where people tell you something's good, but like, there will always be someone that maybe doesn't like it. Well, you it's know? like, okay, you know when you go to like, uh, let's just say like an open mic or just any performance mm -hmm. where someone's like coming up and someone's just like, yeah, everybody come to the stage and everybody just stands there. Yeah. You just, you just don't know you like don't. how people are going to respond. You don't. Yeah. You don't. So, okay, I know you're signed, right? No, not I thought anymore. You were oh. Yeah. Okay, so I can explain that. Okay, so, okay. Basically, after I put out Fucking With The Dime, mm -hmm. I got um, contacted and I put out the video. Mm -hmm. Somehow the video ended up on like the news feed or the Instagram feed of this A&R for like a smaller label. Mm -hmm. It was basically like an R&B genre off of this label called Think It's A Game, who has like YFN Gucci okay. and some of those more urban artists. So. I was picked up by them, which was called Label Gold. And so I was with, the, so when I got with them, I, the fucking with the dime that I had put out like independently was taken down and was put back up under Label Gold. And so was my entire catalog. So that's why a lot of people still think that I'm with Label Gold, but it's just because basically my catalog up until my next release is like underneath them. Cause I was with them okay. from when I basically just got started until 
last mm, last may june last summer basically mm -hmm. so i was with them and like things were cool it just like was it was like a mutual just like not like you know like a good fit especially because um it was definitely more like urban based like okay. rapping which like i would you know do a little bit but yeah, i yeah. think i'm more like you said like r b like i think that's what people think when you know they think yeah. of me so now I'm with different management. I'm with 257 management, but I'm not currently like signed with a label at the time. Okay. Yeah. So yes. do you have any advice for, I guess, artists that are trying to look right. for like that type of sponsorship? And yeah. Stuff? Um, I guess, cause a lot of people do ask me this. With my situation, I think it was a little bit more like rare just because I literally, just put out a song and like somehow just ended up on the feed of someone you know what i'm saying but yeah but i feel like you did have a lot of background right okay you know what I mean? right. it's not like um because i feel like that's what people think is gonna happen right like you just put out a song and, and like it's just it gonna and it's just gonna pop pick up yeah yeah. I don't, yeah yeah no that's that's very true um one thing that i think helped me like immensely was the the distributor that I used. So I okay. used this distributor called Record Union. And I lit it was so weird. I literally just did like a Google search and was like, upload music okay. to Spotify or like how to up and Record Union was the first distributor. I didn't even go through TuneCore District. I didn't even do my research. I just clicked Record Union. Okay. And it turns out that Record Union, I don't know if it's a partnership with Spotify, but basically like everyone that uploads their music mm -hmm. through record union gets pitched to like spotify editorial playlist which a lot of people don't know okay so i just every single so i had put out fucking with a dime mm -hmm. i had put out this is not a love song i had put out finer things like all in the span of about two months and mm -hmm. every time i uploaded it to record union like it was getting like editorially like playlisted oh that's crazy so i always but i do think it's also because you're good right it's okay not, yeah like i you know i don't want to like yeah yeah but I, it takes it takes work yeah <laughs> i would definitely say on the artist side mm -hmm. um creatively don't, I think that what a lot of people do sometimes is they look at what's like trending yeah. at the moment and they try and use that as a blueprint. Yeah. I would not just because what's hot right now doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be hot in a few months from now, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And when you base your whole career off of a trend, like you're trying to emulate a trend, it just, you're taking away from like the value of you being like an individual and artist. Like yeah. you're not supposed to be replicating other sounds. You're supposed to be creating your own sound. Yeah, so yeah. like, even if it's funny, fucking with the dime. When I first, before I put it out, I put it on this like anonymous like music blog, and like it got like ripped apart. Are you like kidding ripped, me? Like ripped like to like shreds. That's crazy. Like they were like, do not put this out. Like this is horrible. Like worst thing I've ever heard. Like. Is she rapping? Is she singing? Like it was just like, which I think is because it just sounded very different. Yeah, so yeah. people were just like, what, you know, is this? And like, I just followed my gut and I just put it out anyway. Yeah, yeah. So you really do have to believe in yourself. And ultimately, I feel like if you're being true to yourself, meaning that you're like not creating music that you think other people want to hear, but you're creating music that is real, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's authentic. Like you're not trying to follow anyone else or emulate anyone else. And you're just being unapologetic. Like I remember when I was first coming out, I literally was like, okay, I wouldn't recommend spamming things, but I was, I was spamming. I was posting my, oh, I just dropped this song two, three times a day on Instagram. I was hitting people up in the DMs, like check out my song. Like okay. I was just really, Putting, putting myself in. out there. Yeah, like yeah. I was not putting energy. Into yeah, it. because yeah. previously I was like almost hiding it, if that made sense. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. yeah. You were experimenting. Yeah. Like I what was is this about to do? Yeah. So then I was like, okay, I just need to be letting everyone know. Like I was going to events, you know, like reaching out to people, collabing with other artists, just basically just like getting like creating like a like it doesn't matter if it's a huge buzz or a small buzz but if you if someone brings up your name and they say oh she's an artist you're already like in the right direction yeah. you know what i'm saying like 
you have to create and establish some sort of identity for yourself and the only way to do that is to put yourself out there and create art you know what i'm saying like i feel like everything else will fall into place if that makes sense yeah but like obviously like i was submitting myself to music blogs like mm -hmm. but nowadays yeah i mean were you paying so because they're like because I mean, I've looked it up yeah. myself. Like I've looked up different blogs that were popular and stuff. Yeah. And there's so many now. Yeah, I know there is. And I mean, they ask for like a hundred dollar like fee right. just to like look at it. Right, so, right. So I think I did one blog on somewhere called a &R Factory. I think I paid like $20 for, that was like the first thing I did. Cause me too, like I thought like, yeah. okay, blog post means you have to be like paid for it. So. I did that and then after that, I basically would just start like reaching out to like very small like startup music blogs basically. Okay. So, and those ones are usually, you know, free. It's just free exposure. So I would do that and then after I would get my blog posted, I would go and post on my Instagram like, hey guys, look like I'm on a blog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like basically just, cause there is a sense that it is like a fake it till you make it sort of thing where Sometimes people- No, I feel like that's real. No, yeah. no, that's not fake. Okay, it because, is, you have to. Because I feel like you're literally, I mean, you're putting in all this energy. Yeah. Like, I don't think I've heard of anybody putting as much like active energy into their like music. Right. You know, and I feel like obviously that's gonna make a difference. Right, no, it does for sure. Um. Like, I would tell like new artists, like you have to hold yourself and carry yourself like you're already like at the next like stage that you want to be where you are right now. Yeah. So like not saying that it's almost like being professional. As right, an artist, right. Right. Exactly. Like it's not even like I'm saying turn down any startup blogs or startup companies because you're too good for that. Like not in that sort of way, but you have to show up like, okay, like I'm an artist, like I'm an upcoming artist, like what would an artist do today? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, would I just chill and watch Netflix all day and then hang out with my friends and not really do anything productive? Or yeah. would I try and see if there are any music blogs I can reach out to? Um, try and even just watch, there's so many YouTube videos just about putting yourself out there and good mm -hmm. Instagram strategies for new artists, how to blow on TikTok, like educating yourself. Cause it really is, even when you're not in the studio, it's like a full time thing. Like I'm yeah. constantly like, doing something you know what i'm saying yeah, so yeah. it's and as you grow like it'll get easier because i know at the beginning it's like you're like okay what do i do like i put out my song yeah. like, how do i get it out there but i literally was just on youtube mm -hmm. looking up okay found this blog like look, even if i'm just dming two or three people a day like making connections asking other that's another thing i did asking other artists what they did okay like okay what did you do like they tell me I take that, I apply it. Mm -hmm. And just basically like working like every single day. Like don't, like just, there shouldn't be a day that goes by where you don't feel like you did something. I'll remind you this time, but it won't be twice.